MPG Ranch hosts 217 documented species of bees we discovered through collection surveys. Bees collect nectar and pollen as they forage on flowers, like this leafcutter bee who navigates through long thistle strands. Thimbleberry flowers provide nectar to bees. This bee roams around inside a thimbleberry flower. Bees serve as vital pollen couriers for plant fertilization. They are critical to sustain plant communities' seed production. Bees pollinate both native and non-native species of plants. Here, a honeybee arrives with loaded pollen sacs. The color of the pollen produced by a plant will determine the color of the pollen sac. 75% of bees collected are sweat bees. Sweat bees are drawn to the salts in human sweat, like this bee perched on a staff member's finger. There are a thousand species of sweat bees in North America. Sweat bees practice a variety of nesting strategies, from communal nesting, solitary nesting, to primitive social nesting. In the past, we managed a honeybee apiary, but managed pollinators aren't necessary in a non-agricultural environment. Honeybees pollinate wild rice on the north end of the clubhouse pond. Pollen falls from the flower head as the bee forages for nectar and pollen. Early European settlers introduced honeybees. They were widespread in the U.S. by the 1800s and are established on every continent except Antarctica. They economically support commercial pollination for many plants. There is evidence that honeybees are competitive with some native bees, like bumblebees seen here on thistle. Honeybees transported around the country can come in contact with honeybees from other areas that leads to the spread of disease. Some honeybee diseases have been observed in wild pollinators. Bumblebees nest both above and below ground. Their nests are extremely difficult to locate. Here, a bumblebee lingers at the nest entrance. A botanist at MPG found a bumblebee nest along Woodchuck Creek. She was crawling under the vegetation during a plant survey and discovered a lot of bee activity. She discovered the nest in this pile of leaf litter at a fork in the tree trunk. Located nests allow us to study native bumblebees' habitat. We collected a few specimens of western bumblebees, but more collections allow us to study them further. Here you will see the bumblebees exiting a conspicuous hole in the leaf litter. The female worker bees leave the nest multiple times to forage. These two bumblebees return to the nest together. There are at least nine species of native bumblebees on MPG Ranch. The common name for Bombus bifarius is the two-form bumblebee. It is native and is our most common bumblebee species. Like the honeybee, managed bumblebees in greenhouses also spread disease to wild pollinators. Mary Rose Coleman studies bee populations. She has collected over 64,000 individuals and identified 217 species since the project began in 2013. In 2013, 14, and 15, we collected invasive star thistle leaf cutter bees. MPG collections are the first documentations of this species in Montana. We've caught a few leafcutter bees here. Today we're focusing mostly on knapweed. See what we catch off of that. It's towards the end of the season, at least on the floodplain for knapweed, so we'll see. 
Mary Rose nets bees off of knapweed. But neither of them appear to be carrying pollen. They have these long antennae, which makes me think they're males. They can go free. Female bees carry pollen, males do not. So males are released when caught. Okay, so here's a leaf cutter and it's a female and you can see she's got pollen on the underside of her abdomen. And they have this kind of stout looking appearance. They have large mandibles for cutting pieces of leaf which they use to line their nest cells. So I'm gonna look at the pollen that she has on her later this winter in the lab. I caught her off of knapweed, so I'll make a note of that. Star thistle bees prefer knapweeds and star thistle plants. Star thistle leafcutter bees may be in competition with native leafcutter species because both species peak in July at the same time knapweed is in full bloom. A leafcutter bee fights for space on a non-native thistle. Most species of bees and butterflies pollinate knapweed and other invasive plants. Leafcutter bee capture coincides with spotted knapweed bloom. Like the yellow pollen collected on this female leafcutter bee, bees need pollen to reproduce. Bees place pollen near the eggs, so when the eggs hatch, the larvae eat the pollen as they develop into an adult. Yellow star thistle does not occur on MPG, but its close relative, knapweed, does. It provides copious amounts of pollen and is a resource for many insects like this honeybee and star thistle leaf cutter bees. There may be some kind of invasive mutualism with knapweed, leaf cutter bees, and European honeybees. Most native flowers bloom in spring and early summer. Knapweed outcompetes native plants for space and thus reduces abundance of native plants. Knapweed opens a niche for bees because it blooms from July to September when most native plants finish blooming. A patch of knapweed before it blooms reduces resources early in the season and thus shifts the nectar phenology to late in the summer when it blooms. We collect female leaf cutter bees to identify them to species to characterize star thistle leaf cutter bee invasion. When the bees occur, what floral resources they use, and which leaf cutter species they co occur with. Mary Rose caught two leaf cutter bees on knapweed, and both bees have pollen on them. Mary Rose collected more leaf cutter bees today than she expected. She transfers each to a test tube and stores them for later inspection in the lab. Leaf cutter bees nest in existing cavities like a hole in a tree trunk, holes in wood posts, snail shells, insect galls, and hollow plant stems like this plant stem with eggs enclosed. Star thistle leaf cutter bees can be aggressive competitors with other leaf cutters for nest sites. Native goldenrod grows on the northern floodplain. Here, a green metallic sweat bee investigates goldenrod. Mary Rose collects bees from the flower head. A few small bees were netted. They will be identified and analyzed in the lab. Tansy is a bright yellow flower that also grows on the northern floodplain. Unlike goldenrod, it is an invasive plant. Mary Rose collects bee species from its flower head. The bees she collects are sent to Schuyler Burrows of the USDA Logan Bee Lab to identify and archive. They send the data back to us for our research, and we analyze bee pollen load. We placed bowls of water to collect bees at specific phenology monitoring sites. It is our main method for bee collection. Jordan Lyman interned for Mary Rose's Bee Project with the Ecology Project International program this summer. 
As part of Jordan's internship, Mary Rose supplied leaf cutter bee data for analysis. He learned to graph data which showed invasive star thistle leaf cutter bees co-occur with native leaf cutter bees. The results suggest the two bees may be in competition. Jordan was excited to learn the bees are the same size, occur at the same time in the same habitat. These similarities suggest strong competition. The long-term bee monitoring project has added 59 new species records to the state of Montana. Bees are used as a response variable to monitor bee community change over time in relation to restoration treatments. We document bee species richness and abundance to add to the knowledge base of bees in our area.